the standard form for the equation of an ellipse with center HK is going to be one of the following two equations. First, the, the, an ellipse with a horizontal major axis, you'll have x minus h, the quantity squared, over a squared, plus y minus k, the quantity squared, over b squared, equals 1. So you need to know that. Notice there's a plus in between. Now, ellipses with the vertical major axis, the equation will be h, I'm sorry, x minus h, the quantity squared over b squared, plus y minus k, the quantity squared over a squared. So notice the, um, the distance from the center to the end point of the major axis is a, and for the vertical major axis, the a goes with the y. It's in the same term as the y. And for the horizontal major axis, the a is in the same term as the x. Now, other textbooks will do this differently. I've seen like four different ways of doing these things. Um, but we're so if you've seen something slightly different, that's why. But this is what we're using in this course. So the longest uh, side, the longest uh, axis of the ellipse, which is the major axis, the distance from the center to the vertex, which is A, uh, goes with the x term if the if it's the ellipse is elongated in the x direction, and with the y term if the ellipse is elongated in the y direction. So notes, one, A equals distance from center to ellipse along the major axis, in other words, to the end point of the major axis. And B is the distance from the center to the ellipse along the minor axis. Note two, a is greater than or equal to B, with A equals B only when the ellipse is a circle, in which case A equals B it equals what we would usually call R, the radius of the circle. Okay, so, so the way we're doing it, A is always the larger number, unless it's a circle, in which case it's equal to B. So number three, note number three, the major axis has length 2A, the minor axis has length 2b, of course, because a is the distance from the center to the end point, and so you have to double that to get the um, length of the major axis or minor axis. C, remember what C is. C is the distance from the center of the ellipse to the foci along the major axis. So the foci are on the major axis as are the vertices. So the formula for C, and you'll have to remember this, C equals the square root of A squared minus B squared. Remember, A is always larger than B, so this will always be a real number. It's larger than B or the same as B in case of a circle. So in the case of a circle, notice that C equals zero because A equals B. That just means that the two foci are fused into one at the center of the circle. And it's the distance zero from the center. So C is the distance from the center along the major axis to, the fo to each focus. C equals square root of A squared minus B squared. Then there's something called eccentricity of an ellipse. Um, you might have heard this when people are talking about orbit, orbits of planets and their eccentricity. Uh, there's a specific definition for that. It's E equals, by definition, C over A. So C is the distance from the center to one of the foci. 
and A is the distance from the center to the vertex. So A, the foci is always inside, the foci are always inside the ellipse, and so C is smaller than A, so this is always a number less than one. As the focus gets closer and closer to the vertex A, this gets closer and closer to one. As the focus gets closer and closer to the center, this gets close to zero, and it'll be zero for a circle. A circle has eccentricity zero. So that's C over A. Yeah, so I just made a little note that the um, for a circle, the eccentricity is zero. And Y. Okay.